So, my five minutes are up. So, who heard, <laughs> here, heard of TIS-100? Who well, have played it already? Some of you. So, uh, for those who don't know it, I'm going to explain to you what it is and why you should play it. So, TIS-100 is this game you see on the background. Uh, there's a number of cells or nodes, uh, and you can program in them. You can program in assembly. If you have never assembly programmed before, this, if you like programming and like games and puzzles, this is a great game. So I will go a little bit in detail what you can do. So there are a few re um, re registers and ports that you can uh, assign numbers to. So there's the accumulator and the backup accumulator. Uh, there's nil where you can write to, and the, and the up and the down ports. Also there are left and right, but I'm not going to talk about them just now. What you can do are some instructions. So the first instruction is no operation, so do nothing. Uh, other things are you can move things around, or you can swap uh, the value of the accumulator and the backup accumula accumulator, or you can add things from sor some source, um, uh, I guess. So, um, so that's a computer, you can play with it, uh, which is very nice. And, and this is actually a game I played and I'm really passionate about. Um, and then I read an article about super optimization, which is uh, extremely cool. It's a form of optimization where you take a piece of code and try to find the best in the sense of the least amount of instructions for the same thing to, to do the same thing. So I got curious about it and I wanted to try to uh, write a super optimizer for this game only for one cell. So, so I did that in Rust, obviously. Um, so I took this node, I, I uh, modeled it, and um, this is what I got out. So there's an accum accumulator, there's a, an up port and down port and some things that, you, that are not publicly available. Uh, and then um, there was a, a program, and a program is nothing more than a, than a vector of instructions, and each instruction is one of the things that you can do to, to, do, to, this, uh, to this node. So um, that got the details down. <coughs> now we need to execute the program on this node, which is this little line. So basically it's just fetch an instruction from your program. If it's available, execute it on the, uh, on the node, so the, the program counter gets incre incremented. If it's not available, then check if there's some work to do um, so you can loop, otherwise just uh, um, continue. So this is actually a simulator for this little computer, which is awesome, uh, but now we want to create the best program for, for a, a, a certain um, puzzle, so you will. So how do you do that? Well, there's a program iterator, and it's actually nothing more than a number. Because if you can count from 0, 1, 2, 3, you can also iterate through all those programs. And I'm going to tell you how you can do that, um, but basically you already know. So if you say a number like 3,435, what you're actually doing is you're assigning different kind of digits to different kind of positions. And you can do it with different numbers. So if you know binary, you can count 0, 1, 1 would mean Five? Yeah, five. Um, so, but you can also assign this to, to uh, program instructions. So what I'm doing here is I'm calculating the digits of the current number uh, that is some string. And what I'm looking at that is I'll assign each digit to a certain instruction. And that's the program. So how do I get from a certain digit to a certain instruction? Well, there's a mapping, which is displayed here. Uh, and what it does is you will start out with zero which will do the no operation. And then you will count one, will be the swap, and then you'll do two, which is save, and then three, what we add to the source port. And in that sense, you can just step through all kinds of programs just by counting. This is what I'm doing. Um, the only thing that's left to solve a puzzle is create a source of input. So these are the inputs, zero, one, two, and three, and create the intended output, uh, two, or sorry, one and five. And if you think really hard about it, you could do add the first two uh, as the output, and then the, the second two, uh, you'll get the input. So if you would try this on the thing I wrote, uh, you, you'll see this. So this is the program. I'm just highlighting it for convenience. And then uh, I will go over to the terminal and uh, type in uh, the cargo command that will run my simulator. And it will come up with a solution, uh, hopefully. Well, this is a video, so I know <laughs> that it's going to do. Uh, and the solution is actually uh, almost, but not quite, entirely uninteresting because it's a solution that you would think of yourself if you would do play this game. And the problem is that um, super optimization is very interesting, but only for machines that are real because then you can do all sorts of fancy things with the uh, addition and the Boolean operators of the machine, and the TAS doesn't have that. So it was fun, but not very useful. 